Greetings everyone, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating a basic return into libc exploit. In order to facilitate this exploit I'm going to be using a GDB extension called PETA or the Python Exploit Development Assistance Framework. This framework is helpfully included in the link in the video description. You're going to need to, in order to install this you're going to need to do two things. One, copy the folder called PETA into your home directory which is slash root. Two, you're going to need to edit your gdb init file located there and add this line source uh, home pita slash pita dot pi. You will note that you have successfully installed pita when you type in gdb and you get this prompt gdb dash pita in color. Ooh. Okay. As usual, let us take a look at the source code we're going to be using, which is here in example 3.1. Now, if you saw my previous video where I showed a stack-based buffer overflow and shellcode, this will look perhaps eerily familiar. In fact, the only difference between this and the previous source code is that this buffer only stores four characters instead of 64 characters. Now, four characters is obviously too small to store both a NOP sled and the shellcode, so we're going to have to use a different technique to exploit this, which is going to be return into libc. So, let us fire up GDB and let us look at the overflow function. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint at the string copy, which is overflow plus 29. Now I'm going to need to do four things in order for this exploit to work. One is I'm going to need a libc function that I'm going to want to return into from this function. For that I'm going to use the function called system. The second thing I'm going to need is a return from that function, which I'm going to use the exit function. The third thing I'm going to need is a command for the system function to execute, and I'm going to use bin sh, or a shell. And the fourth thing I need is, just like in the previous exploit, I'm going to need the offset to eip so that I can override it with my return address of choice. Now all of this is actually quite simple to do. So, PETA has a built-in command called print, and print will helpfully print out the address of any given function you want. So I can simply do print system, all right, I have to run it first. Now I can do print system, and lo and behold, I have the address of the system function. I can do the exact same thing for exit, and now I have the address of the exit function. I can use PETA's find command, which is slightly different than GDB's find command in the sense that with PETA, I don't need to provide a start and end address. So I can find any arbitrary string in memory, I'm going to look for bin sh. And there it is. So now again, the final thing we need to do is find eip. So if we go back to our disassembly overflow here, we'll find that there is only one local variable, which we know as a negative offset from ebp, and here it is ebp minus 0xc. So to get the address of this, I can do ebp minus 0xc. And now I have this address of bffff32c. And then I also need to get eip, and that is bffff33c. So I can look at the stack, and I'll do uh, bffff3 minus 16 or so. All right, with, with PETA sometimes it, it messes up the type here. If you want to force it to always show um, D word chunks, you'd have to do DWX, like so. There we go. So 32C is my local variable, 33C is my EIP. So we can see that I need to fill 16 bytes, and then I'm at my return address. So now I have all the pieces necessary to create my exploit, so now let's put it together. Now I'm going to run this outside of GDB. So dot slash example, and then command substitution syntax using Python as per usual. So the first thing I need to do is fill my buffer. Now unlike in the previous demo, I don't need to fill it with NOPs because I'm not going to return into my NOP sled. All I'm trying to do is fill space because I'm going to return into the return address perfectly. So just some random character here, 16 times. The next thing I need is the address of the system function. And remember it has to be in a little endian, so slash x70, 28, e1, b7. 
The next thing I need is the address of exit, which is where I'm going to return into from system, which is at 35C E0 E7. Finally, I need the address of bin SH, which is at 68 19 F5 E7. Uh, if I've done this correctly, I should get a shell. And as you can see, I do. If I exit out of it, I'm back to my normal prompt. Now there's one final consideration here. The point of system is self-evident. That's the function that executes my command of choice. And the purpose of bin sh is self-evident. That's my command of choice. But what exactly does exit accomplish? Well, let's find out by removing it. If I execute this again, but instead of the address of exit, I simply provide four random bytes. When I run this, I still get a shell. However, if I exit out of it, I segfault upon return. Because what's happening is, system is still being called, it's executing binsh, but when I exit out of binsh and system returns, it's returning into essentially 0x4141, 41, 41, 41, 41, which is an invalid address and thus segfaulting. So having a clean return address from your return into libc function is important to have a clean exploit. So I lied, there's actually one super final consideration that didn't come up in this demo, but might come up when you're trying to replicate it. Depending on the address values you get for the three things you need, the system, the exit, and the bin sh, you might get certain bytes, like for example, slash x20, that Python will interpret as a space rather than as a literal byte that you're trying to simply pass into the program. The way to get around that problem is to wrap the entire command substitution in double quotes like so. You see I have a double quote around the entire thing like this. What this will do is this will force Python to treat everything that's being passed in as a literal and only interpret it during the actual execution of the program. So this will get around that problem of having invalid bytes or bytes that Python simply doesn't like. And you'll see when I run this I get the exact same thing I did before. But if I had any of those invalid bytes, which in this demo I didn't, that would solve that problem. Thanks for watching.